Okay, so this is a quick tutorial on some of the newer tools in Revit for topography. Um, quite a few things have changed. Uh, we now have topo solids. So it's definitely worth the time to look at a few options in terms of working with topo solids. So I'm going to walk through um, the project my studio is working on right now, starting with the traditional system that we usually use. Uh, which unfortunately for this one doesn't work out so well, but let's look at why it doesn't work uh, in this particular case. So our site is um, downtown Springfield, Missouri, small little park that we're placing a new building upon called Jubilee Park, sort of an underutilized asset in the community. Um, so let's do import. So I'm in format right now, and we are going to import this terrain and satellite aerial photograph. So I'll click Finish Importing. Um, if you're not familiar with Formit, um, get familiar with Formit. It's really good. Um, so this gives me the basics here. If I switch to Layers, I can change what I'm viewing to Terrain. And this is going to give me a basic mesh that represents the topo model. And I would say 9 times out of 10, this is just an ideal thing to send into Revit um, to use to generate a basic understanding of topography. It is not surveyor level quality by any stretch, but to get a basic understanding of what the site and topography is doing, it is usually perfect. So I'm going to save this object out. So save sketch as locally. I'm just going to drop this right to my desktop and call this site topo one. And notice that it's saving a .axm file inside of Revit. I can do inserts, CAD, and I can change my file type to AXM, which is format. And that was to my desktop. So site topo one format. And this will come in. Um, exactly centered how it was inside of format. So middle of the objects at my zero, zero, zero. If I look at this in 3D, you'll also notice that if I switch to textures, it has brought in the aerial photograph, everything right along with it. So super, super handy to have this. However, I want in this case to switch this to a topo solid. So to do that, I would come into massing in sight topo solid and then create from import so from there create from CAD and I can select my entire object all of my layers selected and I would typically say OK and that is pretty much done what I need to do next is select that background object so this is what I imported from format I am going to unpin and delete it and I am left with that now the problem with this let's go away from this back to hidden line that is showing one two three feet of fall like right through the middle of the site and I know that that is just not right um, in fact if we look at this same file in GIS viewer that is what my site is actually doing it is a linear fall um, that is topo line 1303 to 1305. So I actually have, you know, essentially one here at 1304. So one, two, three feet roughly of rise across the site and sort of this little berm right here. But I'm not concerned about that because, uh, again, that's kind of going away as we build on this site. So it's, it's yeah, it's just not right. Um, that format file is showing... Um, three feet worth of change running through the middle of the site. And so again, I, like I said, nine times out of 10, I get great data from that. And this is just how that particular format file has come together. So knowing that, I'm going to go back into Revit and let's just undo a few things here. So let's control Z out and let's get back to my format model right here. Um, and I want to do a few things. I, I, I'm happy with this, 
not happy with the geometry because I can't use that as a topography, but I know that this aerial photo is one-to-one. -one. So what I really want is I want to be able to bring that model in as a satellite photograph, and I am simply going to do my best to recreate those topo lines from this GIS viewer right here onto my Revit topography by building a topo solid um, simply using the topo solid line creation tools. So let's get rid of this and let's replace it with that aerial photograph. Inside of Formit, I can grab this aerial photograph by looking at my materials. Let's go to that layer. I can select my objects and my material sampler wants to be in sketch. So that right here is my terrain um, satellite photograph scaled exactly with this geometry. So I'm going to double click that to edit and I'm going to click that button to save. And let's again write this just temporarily to the desktop and we'll call this site topo image. Okay, so now inside of Revit, if I'm looking at my site plan view, I'm going to switch my visual style to wireframe that allows me to see through this current solid mesh and I can do insert image from my desktop site topo image and click. We'll scale those so that they match. Zoom in a little bit. I'm going to use, going to use the arrow keys to nudge this over. And again, um, level of precision here, um, you know, we're within a foot. Wouldn't want to build with it. Certainly is close enough that I can design with it. Okay, that gets me something like that. So this satellite photo is essentially matching what my format mesh imported. So let's go back. So right now I'm viewing the format mesh. Now I'm viewing the satellite image. So let's again, unfortunately, we're going to wave by to the format geometry. And now we are just left with that satellite image. So I know on this site that I have a 1303, 4, and 5 across my site. Um, and if I zoom out just a bit, that was a bit too much, that I have 1302 and 1306. So if I were to simply draw in and leave this going pretty much north to south, 1302, 1303, 1304, 1305, I'm in pretty good shape. Is it 100% precise? No. Is it closer than what I had for Formit? Absolutely. And I could, I could screen capture this and sort of bring it in and sort of line it up, um, but let's just keep things a bit easier to deal with than that. Um, it just because I, I just don't quite need that level of detail. Okay, so to create a topo solid on top of this, I'm just going to start by activating the topo solid tool, and I'm going to use this image to draw my base. Okay, so I now have this. I know my north side. Let's orient this correctly. So we can see my north side right here. That's my north. That's my south. I want this side to be my 1302. Okay, so I'm going to eliminate the 1300 and let's just call that 2 and let's call this 5. So this side, after I green check, we will modify sub elements. This edge right here is going to be 2. This side here is 5. And right away, you can see that I have two new contour lines. Wow, that material is awful. Let's change back to wireframe so we can sort of see what we have. Okay, so I see now that my south edge of the site is 
essentially one, two, three feet higher than the north edge. So that's a really good starting point to this. If I wanted to add in some additional detail, right? So 1304 is really kind of coming through at an angle across the site. I can certainly begin to do that. And how I would start to do some of those things, I can select my topo solid. And again, I can click modify sub elements. And I can always come in and say add point. Okay, so if we look at my site, I could say add point, I want 13, so this is 1305, this edge is 1305, um, or five feet, this is 1304. If I wanted to modify that and move it around, I can modify sub elements, and I can add points, and those points are either absolute or relative along the surface. I definitely would rather those points be absolute, I can make them four feet and I can start at this edge and I can start working those topo lines a little bit more like that across the site. And you can see right away the kind of impact that that has made on the topography that comes across. So I can push and pull those as much as I want to. Um, again, for this site, it is such a simple site and there's so little grade change that I would kind of keep something like that simple okay the next thing that has definitely changed is how our topo solid responds to something like a slab on grade or a building pad you'll notice the building pad tool is not even there anymore so what we want to do with something like that is come in and we are actually going to be using um, the component tools to, to start building those kind of things. In long run, this is a much better system because we actually can look at displacement, things like that. I'm going to go component, model in place, and let's choose a generic model, or actually let's come down, I believe we have some topo things we can do. Topo solid, and say okay. And this would be building void. I can use my void form, void extrusion, and if my building pad was going to sit someplace in this area right here, if I look at that in 3D, that's starting um, at zero, it's ending at one. Green checkbox, oh, I actually need to tell them to subtract. So if you notice I'm green checkboxing this, um, it's saying nothing is cutting, so what I need to be able to do is activate cut and say this is getting cut by that. And now you can see it's actually made that hole. Click the wrong button, finish model, and let's look at what's done here. Okay, so now you can see I do have that cut that's happening, and I also know um, that let's say that my level one needs to line up a little bit better. I can move that topo solid just like in previous things. I can move that topo solid up and down. So my level one right here is uh, roughly where it needs to be. Let's go ahead and select that building void again and let's edit in place and let's say that that is going to start at my zero and end at 20 and that should actually leave that cut in place now just like that okay just like in previous like where i was starting to go with this i can select my topo surface and i can choose to move it up or down based on where that needs to go so raising that up i'm actually cutting below that grade now at this point um, but i can edit my sub elements and I can move those where I might need to to get everything working correctly relative okay so it's it's a different set of tools it's gonna take everybody a while to get used to but it does do some things much better because it's a solid and one of those things that is much nicer let's go to our site plan is I can handle some things like roads and sidewalks in a different way now so if I select my topo solid 
I can subdivide now and subdivide will allow me to do some simple things like trace out a portion of the road. I'm not, not going to do a lot of this because nobody wants to watch me draw. Let's just do a little bit here. And I am purposely leaving gaps. Talk about gaps here in just a second. And we will close that off right here. So with those gaps, um, I can start filling in these radiuses by using the fillet arc tool. So that connects to that with that kind of radius. This connects to that with that kind of radius. I need to close off this edge. So again, um, like a lot of things in Revit, this tool does need to create closed loops. I can't leave open geometry on this. Arc. Zoom in just a little bit more for this one. And this one. And I believe that just about has it. Yeah, so we've got a closed loop once I finish this line right here. And let's look at that in 3D. Uh, and when I green checkbox that, I will have this piece that pops up by a factor of one foot. So if I change that to, let's just change that to a new material, rename road, and what I really want is for right now just sort of a nice polite gray. Okay, graphics, match, apply, and okay. And so now I have sort of a nice polite gray. So I can then come across next and put a sidewalk right there with it, um, which would use a really similar technique. So let's just do the sidewalk right along this portion. So I'm going to select my topo solid again, subdivide, and let's just trace, use pick lines as a starting point. And then I'm just going to come around and make this additional sidewalk here, something like that. Okay, so again, let's look at it in 3D, so you can see where that's being created. Rather than that going up, let's send this up six inches. Sidewalks are higher, let's send that up one foot six inches. So that will give me a, a sidewalk that is six inches higher. And let's give that a new material, sidewalk, appearance, um, another polite gray, a little bit of warminess, have the graphics match the appearance, and you can see what we're starting to build. So a lot of times what I've been working towards is all of these things sort of floating up above. And as this works through the terrain, and even as you make modifications to the train, these pieces right here using the subdivide tool will match the train. They are going to work consistently over the top of the train that you have, which is a really, really nice feature to work with. So uh, continue to work with that, develop those things, get used to this Topo Solid tool. I have a feeling they're going to evolve over the next few releases in a significant way. Uh, but it is definitely a brand new direction for Revit topography to be taking. Cheers all.